Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this video, I'm doing something that I don't typically do for full accounting cycle videos. I'm going over the fourth financial statement, a statement of cash flows. So I do have a more thorough video on this elsewhere. I will link to that in the description here. But if you are working through this problem and you've already seen cash flows before, you have a little bit of experience with them and other problems, this is a good opportunity to kind of see if you can do this for this type of problem here. So as always, we're going to stick to some of our basic rules. I have a little cheat sheet here off to the right hand side that we can use. Um, in the operating section, we are going to include our current assets, which are going to move in the opposite direction of what they moved in for this company. Um, we're going to have our current liabilities here, which are going to move in the same direction as those items that we're seeing on our balance sheet. Then we also have our net income plus our depreciation expense plus our losses minus any gains. Um, and then our investing section will have the purchase of sale of things like PPE and investments and our financing section will deal with the issuance and payments or distributions on debt and equity financing. So as we're working through a lot of these items, I think the biggest thing for us to keep in mind for this video is this balance sheet here is for the first month of operations. So typically, if this was a company that had been in practice for a while, I would say, let's make a column for the beginning balance and the ending balance. However, here we know that for each and every single account we see here, the beginning balance was zero. So during the month, we went from zero to $367,200. We went from zero to $75,000 in accounts receivable, so on and so forth. So we know that everything was, had a beginning balance of zero. So typically I would say, go ahead and write those out, find your increases and decreases. But we know that every single account increased by the amount in the balance. So this is a little bit of a, a different scenario. I know this is a little strange, but I thought it would be a really cool idea to just go ahead and do this and see really a full accounting cycle. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to say, uh, let's start tackling our current assets. Um, as we find them, I am going to mark them off on our balance sheet here so that we know that we have tackled them. All right, so the first item is cash. Cash, of course, this is a statement of cash flow. So this is actually going to go to the very bottom of our statement of cash flows. This is the result. So cash increased by $367,200 because remember it had a starting balance of zero. So the increase in cash is $367,200. We started with zero. That gave us an ending balance of $367,200. So that one's handled. Our next item is going to be accounts receivable. Now keep in mind with accounts receivable, uh, in this case, it was an increase. It is a current asset, and the rule for current assets is opposite. So whenever we see that we have a current asset that is increasing, we're going to put it on the deduct section of our statement of cash flows. That's what that opposite rule means. So since it increased, we are going to deduct that balance, or not that balance, that change. So it increased from zero to 75,000, so 75,000, we're going to deduct out that increase. All right, let's move on to our next current asset, supplies. Supplies went from zero to 2,000, so it increased, which means that we are going to do the opposite, we are going to deduct that increase in supplies. Same rule for prepaid rent. It increased, it went from zero to 12,000, so we're going to do the opposite. We are going to deduct it. Keep in mind that in this scenario, um, if it had been a decrease in any of these accounts, which in that case we would be annual, uh, evaluating the beginning balance and ending balance or analyzing those two items, if it had been a decrease, we would add the decrease. But in this case, we're going from zero to these balances. So for every single one, it's going to end up being a deduct since they all increased. Okay. Now that we've handled all of our current assets, let's move over to our current liabilities and let's tackle those. 
Accounts payable started with zero. Now it has 40,000, so that's an increase of $40,000. The rule for current liabilities is same. It moves in the same direction as the increase or decrease. So if accounts payable increased, it went up. We are going to make it go up on our statement of cash flows as well. Same for our other uh, two liabilities that we have listed here. Both of those will also be increases, so we will have to add both of those. Perfect. Now that we handled all of our current assets and current liabilities, let's take a look at everything else that we have on our balance sheet. I'm going to start with our assets and work our way down. Uh, let's take a look at this equipment balance that we have here. Equipment went from zero to 56,500. What would make equipment go up? That would be purchasing it. So here we have the purchase of property, plant, and equipment. We purchased equipment. That would go in our investing section. Now keep in mind, if we are purchasing this asset, that means that we are spending cash, so that would result in a deduct on our statement of cash flows in the investing section. So I'm going to put purchase of equipment, 56,500. We're also seeing accumulated depreciation here. Um, one of the things that we would want to keep in mind is, did we dispose of any equipment? Um, one thing that you could do is you could move to the transactions for the period and see if any equipment or, or uh, let's see, equipment or buildings or furniture or anything along those lines had been sold. But in this case, nothing has been sold. If we did go back to our transactions, we would see all of these have to do with different type of operating activities. We do see that at one point we had purchased some equipment on account. Um, however, in this case, purchased a little additional equipment on account, but we never sold any equipment. So since we know that we didn't sell anything, we know that the increase in accumulated depreciation is going to be our depreciation expense for the period. If we had disposed or sold of any of our PPE, we would have to kind of reevaluate this a little bit. But in this case, we didn't sell anything. So that's $700. That is our depreciation expense for the period. And in this case, depreciation expense would be an add in the operating section. All right, so we have those account balances dealt with. We have those dealt with. Let's move over to our capital section. All right, so here we have some common stock and preferred stock along with their related paid capital and excess of par accounts. Uh, keep in mind when we're taking a look at those items, they went from zero to the balance presented. So we know that each of those represents the increase in those accounts. So if we went from zero to 25,000, zero to 135,000, so on and so forth, that would be an issuance of stock, right? And any issuance of equity financing, equity financing would be issuance of stock. We know that this would go under our financing section. Now keep in mind, whenever we issue stock, we are receiving cash in exchange for that stock. So those issuances would be an add. So we're going to have an issuance of common stock and an issuance, issuance of preferred stock here. And when we're figuring out the amount of cash that we receive for each one, uh, let's go ahead and tackle the issuance of common stock first. Uh, common stock, we have uh, 25,000 for the stock itself, and then the excess over par was 135,000. So that means that we've received 160,000 for common stock. Preferred stock is going to be the same thing. 
100,000 for the par, 105,000 for the excess over par. Bold that, good. All right, next, let's go ahead and evaluate this retained earnings. Uh, retained earnings, keep in mind, it goes up by net income, down by dividends. So we are actually going to have to take a look at our retained earnings statement off to the side. So first things first, let's handle this net income. Net income we know goes in our operating section. It actually has a special section up top. I'm going to put that up here. Okay. Um, our dividends here, keep in mind, we didn't see any cash dividends payable on our balance sheet. So we know that the amount of the dividends listed here is the amount paid for dividends. Um, that would be a distribution on our equity financing. So we are going to include that as a deduct since we're paying cash on our financing section. So that would be be our cash dividends paid and I'm just going to go ahead and total those two together so we had eight thousand two thousand we had ten thousand dollars that we paid out in cash dividends all right I'm gonna go ahead and bold those we handled them let's move back over here we handled our retained earnings now all right I believe our last item that we really want to take a look at here is our treasury stock. Now, whenever we are buying our own stock back from the public, which is what treasury stock is, uh, that is considered to be a distribution on our equity, right? It works the same way as a dividend. So just like a dividend, any repurchases here of our own stock, so we could call this purchase of treasury stock, um, repurchase of uh, common shares. It really depends on the scenario. I'm just going to call it purchase of treasury stock. That would be included as a deduct on our financing section. All right, perfect. And that was the last item that we had to grab from our balance sheet. Now that we have all of our different amounts, let's go ahead and subtotal everything. So for all of our ads, I am going to subtotal off to the right-hand side. So I'm going to sum up all of those ads. Then I will go ahead and sum up all of our deducts. Same thing for down here. We had zero ads, 56,500 in deducts. We had a few ads here. And a few deducts good now that we have all of our items in the middle column let's find our net cash flows for each section so here for the operating activity section we had net income of 96,500 we had total ads of 81,200 and total deducts of 89,000 so net income plus our ads minus our deducts net cash flows of 88,700 so now that we have our net cash flows from operating activities, let's move on to financing. We had zero ads, but we had 56,500 in deducts. So we're seeing here that we have a negative amount for our net cash flows from investing activities. All right, moving on to our net cash flows from financing activities. We had 365,000 in ads, 30,000 in deducts. So our net cash flows from financing activities. Remember this was the first month of operation. So this corporation actually did a lot of financing this period. So which is why we're seeing such a big increase. Now the last thing that I always encourage you to do is let's go ahead and sum these three items, these three cash flows for our sections up. We had 88, thousand seven hundred for our operating fifty six thousand five hundred negative so minus for our investing three hundred thirty five thousand for our operating or sorry for our financing and we're seeing that it does equal here so if the net of these three does not equal you know you did something wrong 
So that is it for our statement of cash flows. Keep in mind, if you would like more practice, we're going to include some links to those below. Uh, we're going to move on to closing entries next. So until then, happy studying and great work so far.